How do I know if there's a call of God in my life? And what is God's call of God on my life? You know, Adam, I want to be a preacher, but at the end of the day, I don't know if it's full-time preaching that I'm what, I'm what I'm called to be. I'd like to be a full-time preacher, but I just don't feel like that's what I want to do. So I asked this young man, well, tell me what you would like to do. What do you enjoy to do? You know what he said to me? He said, Adam, I love medicine. I love biology. I love studying science. I really, really enjoy. He said, Adam, deep down, I'd love to become a doctor. I looked at him and said, you know what, my friend, this is what I want to encourage you in today. And this is what I want to encourage everyone that's listening in on right now. There is no difference between secular and sacred when it comes to serving God. Sometimes we as Christians have divided secular from, from sacred purposes for each one of us. I believe that everything that we do is sacred. Everything we do should be done unto the Lord. Whether we are engineers or doctors or pharmacists or scientists or whatever it is that God, whether you're a parent, a mother of your children or a stay-at-home dad for your kids, whatever we do, it's unto the Lord. That's what the scripture teaches us. There's no difference between sacred and secular ministry. No, it's all sacred. Whatever it is that God has called you to do is sacred in His sight. If God has called you to be a mom, that's sacred to God. If God's called you to be a doctor, that's sacred to God. Whatever His call of God is on your life, you're called to be a missionary wherever it is that He places you. If He's placed you as a doctor in the medical field, you can utilize your position for the glory of God. You can do Bible studies during lunch break, you can shine as light with nurses and patients all around you. Christ can shine through you. Some of the most unreached people groups today are those that are working in our various service industries and medical care all across this country. If, if doctors and nurses and engineers and scientists would realize that where God has placed them is their mission field, can you imagine how different our society would really be? Listen, it is such a lie that the enemy has placed before the church of Jesus Christ that only the ministers of the gospel are the only ones that can be effective in evangelism or to be a witness or to be a testimony. Listen, when Christ died on the cross, he took away the mindset of Levitical priesthood that only the Levites can serve, that only the Lev Levites can follow after God, that only this certain pedigree of people or this certain nepotistic transition of power can serve God. When Christ died on the cross, anyone that believes on Jesus Christ has become a priesthood. I've become a part of the priesthood. That's why in Peter it says, we are the priesthood of, there's the priesthood of all believers. Every person that believes on Jesus Christ now have direct access to God. It is level ground before God. We all have access to God now. We can all know God. We can all find our purpose in Christ. Every single individual that's listening in here that has a heartbeat and believes in Jesus has become a minister for God. That's amazing. Now you can be a minister as a parent. You can be a minister in your educational facility. You can be a minister on the job as a mechanic. Wherever God has placed you, whatever is in front of you, you now can utilize that cashier or that position as a pulpit to preach Jesus Christ and show forth the love of God. I'm gonna tell you a personal testimony that many of you may not know about me. But when I first left Ireland to move here to the United States for good, the only job that I could get was at Best Buy. People would look at my resume and they could see, well, all he's ever done was pastor or lead discipleship groups or internships. We can't hire him. I had a terrible resume. You know, as a, as a guy that studied ministry and studied the Word of God on my resume, no one's going to really hire me as, as an engineer or a project manager or whatever the case might be. No one's going to look at me and my resume to be anything in the secular world. All I had was ministry experience. So I was kind of bummed out about it. So I took that job at Best Buy and I started out working as a, 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 an attendant at a cashier. And on my first day, I was looking around me at all of the other cashiers and I was looking around me at all of the other employees and I saw the discouragement on all of their faces. And in that first day, I realized, God, you've called me here as a preacher to utilize this cashier as a position of ministry. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start talking with my customers about Jesus. I'm going to start talking with the employees about Jesus. No one's going to stop this preacher from preaching. So I started actually praying with people at the cashier. It was amazing. People would come up to me and I would be scanning them and I would just say to them, hey, as I'm checking you out, hey, is there anything I can be praying for you for today? 
It's amazing the amount of customers that said, yeah, would you mind praying for me? I've got this pain in my back. I'm like, sure. So I'm like praying with them in my Best Buy uniform in the name of Jesus that God would heal their bodies. Isn't that incredible? Do you know that I got promoted at Best Buy multiple times? I went from working at the cashier over to Best Buy Mobile. Then I got to go and be promoted again over to customer service. The general manager said, you're so good with people. We want you to be in customer service. I remember one day this customer came into Best Buy and put her computer up on the, te on the desk and said, I hate this store. This store is a terrible store. I bought this comp computer, illicit content on the computer. And I looked at the customer and I said, well, ma'am, unfortunately, none of our computers come with illicit pornography on computers. That's user error. Well, she flipped out. She didn't want to listen to that. And I said, ma'am, listen, my job is to make this store as good as it can be for you. I want to give you a great customer service experience today. Show me your receipt and I'll do an exception return just for you. She said, really? I said, yes, ma'am, of course I will. So she took out of her pocket the receipt, but the receipt did not say Best Buy. It said Office Depot. I looked at her and said, ma'am, you unfortunately bought this computer at a different store. So this lady immediately turned super sour and sad, and she was ashamed that she had come in to show so much disgust with Best Buy employees when really she just bought the computer from Office Depot. What I felt in that moment from the Holy Spirit to utilize this opportunity for the gospel. And I said to her, you know, ma'am, what you really need is antivirus on your computer. It will save you from getting any illicit emails or stop you from opening up some bad, harmful things for your computer that you will get viruses on it. But I looked at her and said, you know what you really need more than that? She said, what? I said to her, you need to be saved. I said, do you know that right now you have a sin condition and that if you don't get spiritual antivirus for your life, you're going to go to hell. You're going to go to hell, man. You've got no protection of Jesus, no forgiveness from Jesus. And listen to me right now, as mad as you want to be, you cannot go to heaven without Jesus Christ. Guess what this woman does as she's looking at me? She begins to weep right there and then. She opens up to me and she says, well, I'm going through a divorce. I'm, I'm just so mad at life. I'm so empty on the inside. I feel so depressed. And I looked at her in the eyes and I said, well, Jesus can forgive you of your sin. Not only that, he can give you peace and comfort as you're going through this divorce. Jesus can also do a miracle and bring your family back together. Jesus is in the business of doing miracles, but you've got to bring him in on your life. I said, ma'am, would you like to make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life? She says, yeah, I definitely would. I said to her, well, before I do so, can I share this amazing verse with you? Here's where scripture memorization becomes so effective for everybody out there that I've just been talking to about scripture memorization. I looked at her and I said, here's what Jesus said. For God so loves you that he cares so much about you that if you will believe on him, you will not perish but you will have everlasting life because he went to the cross and he died to take upon himself all of our sin, all of our disobedience, all of our anger, all of our wrath. Christ today can save your soul. Well, this lady right there and then repents and puts her trust in Jesus. She's wiping the tears from her face. It's just this amazing miracle moment. Guess what she does next? She goes home and she fills out this survey about me at the store and talks about how much of an impact I had on her life. Well, some of the management at the store said, wow, you're getting some great reviews for our store. What are you doing that's getting us such great reviews? I said to them, well, it's just me sharing the gospel. I'm putting the soul ahead of the product. I'm putting the person ahead of the item. I'm, I'm, I'm telling people that there is a, a love out there that can satisfy more than any item they could purchase at our store. I said, to the, I said to my management, the only thing that's really going to make us great at what we do is when we put the person ahead of our product. That's what Jesus did. Jesus put people ahead of everything else when he went to the cross. He said, I'm going to lay down my life so that I could redeem sinners, so that I could show love to all people, so that I could take upon myself my genuine care for people. Listen, until we know that God genuinely cares about us, then we won't care about what he has to say to us. We won't care about his word. We won't care about scripture memorization. The reason why I memorize scripture is because I know he loves me. I know he cares about me. I know his word is true. And as I believe his word, his word edifies and builds my faith.